There's a lot of interest on how to get rid of plaque in your artery walls. Um, <clears throat> I didn't come up with this. This is stuff that's been around for a while. In fact, I'm going to cover a, an article that John brought up um, 2011. So we're talking a few years ago. It, the title of the article is Integrated Approach for the um, Mechanisms Responsible for Atherosclerotic Plaque Regression. In other words, we've known about this. We've known how that happens, and I'm going to go into the details of it in uh, just a minute. I did do another video on it, a similar one, that focused on HDL and the importance of HDL. Um, <clears throat> as with many of the videos, I mentioned diabetes. Let me draw a connection here. Well, how is HDL connected to diabetes? You may remember in, a, in another video we said that the triglyceride over HDL ratio is one way that we find out just by looking at someone's blood studies um, their, whether or not they have insulin resistance. Why does that happen? Well, <clears throat> triglycerides uh, elevate in a hyperinsulin state and HDL decreases. Um, why is that? Insulin stops fat burning or triglycerides and it creates a lot of uh, buildup of different fats. That buildup of fats is burned up by HDL in terms of um, trying to get those fats out of there. We're going to talk more about how HDL does that uh, in the uh, video today. <clears throat> First, a brief introduction. Uh, my name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. And again, thank you to uh, my viewers, to uh, David Ivers, who raised the question, what is the mechanism for um, pulling LDL out of the artery wall between the media and intima? And thanks again, as always, to John Lorscheider, who uh, did a lot of the research. Uh, John originally suggested this, uh, this citation. It's a great article. Very simple. Um, uh, image I've used it many times to try to remember that um, LDL is what lays down plaque in the arteries. HDL is what pulls it out. So <clears throat> what is HDL and LDL? We talked about that quite, uh, several times. There are the proteins that keep uh, fat from forming blobs in the bloodstream. HDL is the one that pulls fat away from arteries to the liver so the liver can metabolize and burn that fat up. So you want to have a lot of HDL um, available to do that. So I'm going to go over a couple of basics in, the, um, in this image. And I'll put the, uh, the article itself in, um, in the notes on the, on the uh, page below. Now, just to orient you here, this is a schematic. It's obviously not anatomically correct, but here's a couple of points so you'll be able to uh, navigate through this. This is the endothelium, that lining of the artery wall. Uh, this is plaque. And this is, a, again, a, uh, a schematic showing how mostly HDL impacts uh, and pulls uh, LDL out of plaque. So <clears throat> HDL originally starts as what we call ApoA1. Do you remember that? We've done videos on that. ApoA1 and ApoB1. Apo or ApoB. ApoB is the bad part of the LDL uh, molecule and ApoA1 is the good part of the HDL molecule. It's made in the liver and also in the intestine. Um, <clears throat> That uh, ApoA1, once it pulls, uh, is able to pull uh, fat out of that plaque, it becomes what we call a mature HDL or HDL2 or 3. Those then uh, go on back to the, through the bloodstream to the liver usually. The lipid that uh, the HDL pulled off of the, the plaque 
is then uh, released into the liver. And unfortunately, the, uh, that APOA1 gets degraded often by the kidney, or it can get uh, put back into the circulation. So <clears throat> that's the basic uh, life cycle of an APOA1 or uh, HDL uh, particle. <clears throat> There are a couple of other things in this diagram you may be wondering about. For example, what is this? Um, this is where, when you have plaque, you'll get uh, denuding and loss of these endothelial cells. Um, those, when you start getting regression, you're getting HDL pulling plaque, uh, plaque out of the artery wall, those cells can regrow. They will often, the endothelial cells will often grow over and form a patch in the bare spot, or even you'll get um, uh, bone marrow cells that come in and repopulate this area and patch that over. Um, another thing to think about is mast cells, the, you know, the immune cells that attack plaque, uh, those immune cells will also uh, begin to regress, pull back, and quit trying to digest this plaque. These cells, these are supposed to be the um, the muscle cell, smooth muscle cell walls, or smooth muscle cells in that uh, media wall, those will actually start regressing as well. So let me go through and just actually read the, a couple of the uh, first components out of this article uh, to give you some perspective on it. Again, it's an integrated approach for the mechanisms responsible for atherosclerotic plaque regression, A.A. A. Francis and Grant Pierce, uh, Experimental and Clinical Cardiology. Atherosclerosis, which was originally considered to be an ongoing process that was inevitably associated with age. However, plaques are highly dynamic. They're able to progress, stabilize, or regress depending on their surrounding milieu. His term, not mine. A great deal of research attention has been focused on understanding the involvement of high-density lipoproteins on atherosclerotic plaque regression. However, uh, plaque regression encompasses a variety of processes that can be grouped into three main ones. Uh, removal of the lipids and necrotic material. I remember, I mentioned in my uh, an earlier statement a term autophagy. It's related. It's not exactly the same. Autophagy is more of a cellular um, cellular version of this removal of necrotic or dead uh, material. So that's item number one, removal of dead material. Number two, restoration of endothelial function. And you remember we talked about that a few minutes ago when we we're saying even if the endothelium cannot form patches uh, on itself, it's, if it's that big of a hole, um, cells can come in from the bone marrow to form patches in the endothelium. Cessation of vascular smooth, smooth, uh, smooth muscle cell proliferation. We talked about that as well. That's these smooth muscles uh, regressing back into the media area of the artery wall. In addition, the HDL is involved in lipid removal. So again, the major big item there is HDL or lipid removal. Once that happens, then the, remember the inflammation where the immune system, the... Um, Actually, let me show you that too. The immune system, the uh, T cells, macrophages, and uh, leukocytes that are releasing enzymes to try to digest all of this, those regress as well. So, <clears throat> there you have it. Um, I didn't create that. I, I, I didn't make that up. That's something that we've known about in science. So why don't you hear about plaque regression that often? because you don't hear about people uh, reversing their diabetes that often. Uh, but it does happen. Um, again, lifestyle changes, 30 pound weight loss if needed. Uh, there's no medicine that can, that can make that big of an impact. As I discussed earlier, um, HDL is incredible. As a physician dealing with this on a daily basis, HDL is incredibly important. Uh, most docs focus on LDL. As I, as I showed you before, look at NHANES or um, the, um, the Framingham study. 
they make it very clear. What really drives risk is HDL, not LDL. Someone with an HDL of uh, 65, even though they may have a bad cholesterol, an LDL of 220, has far less risk of someone with an LDL of 100, even though their LDL is so low if their HDL is as high as 65. So again, it's that, that delta in HDL. How do you keep HDL going? Two things. Keep that blood sugar down. And um, nice. Thank you for your interest.